so if we back up a little bit, I mean, there's there's centuries of this attempt at creating a narrative about why people of color just simply aren't as good as white people. I mean, this goes back um, centuries and centuries and centuries mm-hmm. um, in the creation of like the, this kind of pseudoscientific concept of race. I mean, it really started as religious concepts and as science evolved into like popular consciousness, there became scientific arguments, especially to justify chattel slavery. Um and, you know, when we look back at the 17, 1800s and we look at the kind of silly scientific studies that they had then, it's really easy to kind of poke holes at them. But we have ones today that argue very similar things um, using kind of pseudoscientific language, sometimes by accredited academics. And there's enough there that they can kind of pull a few together to create kind of a, a, a what seems like a concrete narrative. And frankly, you know, I'm not a geneticist. I can't sit there and debate the merits of one particular paper over another. It's really difficult. And I think it's difficult for most people. And so it's actually, they're actually able to create kind of a, a subculture that has enough scientific quote unquote evidence to create a dialogue um, and then create, you know, patented arguments about this. So if you look back in the sixties and seventies, there was a lot of, basically racist academics that were doing studies to try to prove that that black children couldn't learn as fast as white children. They were later doing things called twin studies to try and show that there was a high heritability of intelligence and therefore uh, intelligence had racial markers to it. Um, All of this has been widely discredited, but it really doesn't matter. There was enough there uh, done by academics with an axe to grind, essentially, that they can create kind of a canon. And that has gone on and lived on in the world of white nationalism. Um, And so today, they're still publishing books by people like Richard Lynn, uh, Arthur Jensen, J. Philippe Rushton. These are discredited and shamed academics. Um, But there's enough that kind of mirrors academia that they can make these arguments. what what's what the language shift that happened starting in Europe in the 70s, but really more like the late 80s and 90s in the U.S. was to, to try and say, oh, we're not arguing that white people are superior. We're just dramatically different. Um, you know, white people just happen to be smarter and more adventurous and more creative and other peoples are better at other things. And so there's a sort of implicit superiority argument to it, but they have enough plausible deniability. And so what you see a lot in the pseudoscientific literature is arguments that, oh, you know, people uh, prefer people of their own race and they have, a, again, a bunch of kind of pseudoscientific uh, picked out studies right. that back that up. Um, I, I think this actually creates a really difficult paradigm for the left because uh, most people assume that this argument has been won in the public consciousness, that no one believes these things, that, for example, racial differences in IQ, that's a, a debate that's been totally victorious on our side. But the reality is, is that most people haven't discussed this for a long time, and they've actually used that that kind of uh, vacuum of proof, of available proof, to make their arguments to a new generation of people. So what we're seeing now is lots of blogs, web forums, YouTube channels that Uh, kind of popularize very old and discredited uh, racial pseudoscience, but people aren't really ready to refute it. And so it's created kind of a new generation of recruits. Um, So I think it's personally important to to begin discussing why these things and make available um, why these things are completely untrue and how they're not really founded in real science.